Two, which will be focusing on case studies of energy efficient buildings. My name is Senem Zeybekoğlu Sadri. I'm an architect and research researcher, and I have been teaching uh, for the last 20 years in several country in several countries and universities. Uh, I am currently living in the UK and working in Academia, an initiative which practices in sustainable design education. In today's sessions, we have three distinguished speakers who are experts and have many years of experience in the field of sustainable energy, efficient building design and construction. Today, we will be listening to Seda Yontem from Ecodenge, London, United Kingdom, and Martina Feyer and Alexandra Frankel from AAP Architect and VN, Austria. Uh, before we start with the presentations, I would like to make a little reminder on uh, some technical issues and format of the session. Our session is going to be 90 minutes. The first 70 minutes are allocated for our speakers' presentations. The discussion part, which is going to be around 20 minutes, is going to take place at the end of the session after all presentations are completed. Uh, you will be able to send your questions uh, to YouTube, as I guess. Should there be any questions left unanswered due to time restrictions, you can direct these questions to speakers through their LinkedIn addresses, which are available on the forum website. Uh, as you can see below, you can follow simultaneous translation of this session in stream two. Before we start with the presentations, I would like to kindly remind you to keep your microphones muted so there will be no background noise. Our first speaker is Seda Yöntem. Uh, she is an architect and sustainable design expert with more than 19 years of professional experience in applied architecture and project management with the focus on energy efficiency and environmentally friendly design. As the founder and manager of the Sustainable Architecture Group of Ecodenge, she has led and contributed as technical expert to high-end projects, including development of urban modeling software and services, high-performance building design projects, research and innovation projects funded by EU, UNDP and World Bank, major wildlife parks around the world, awards in national architectural and urban design competitions, and sustainability consultancy. Her work experience spans several international collaborations and projects in the EU, China, Vietnam, and Azerbaijan. She has also worked as a visiting le lecturer at universities. She is currently living and working in Ecodenge branch office in London. Today, she will be presenting Jezeri Green Technology Vocational High School and Kırıkkale Mehmet Akif Ersoy High School in Turkey. So, Seda, we are listening to you, please. Thank you for the great introduction, Senem. Um, I will try to share my screen first. Everyone's um, seeing it right now. Um, so sorry for this. Yeah, today um, I will be talking about um, who we are briefly, and then uh, our design philosophy as the architectural group uh, and three of our projects. Um, so I'd like to thank the organization committee for this outstanding event and inviting me to this platform to present our projects and vision, which I hope will be informative and inspiring for those who are here with us in this session today. Um, as a couple of words for my company, we are a group of interdisciplinary uh, experts on uh, architecture, uh, engineering, uh, IT and economy. 
Um, and we always work together to make an inclusive added value to all our projects. We are always working with the awareness on and responsibility towards ecological and climate emergency. Our company was founded in 1996 in Ankara. Now we have a branch office in London and another branch office in Amsterdam. Our aim is to continue taking part more in international projects and maximize our positive environmental impact on our planet. Our drivers, which are mainly sustainability targets, are supported by our research projects and we utilize our know-how in our design projects and products. Up to date, we have had the chance to work with more than 200 partners in 35 countries. Currently, uh, we are developing our software products for digital twin platforms, which is the most effective way of delivering sustainable buildings throughout their life cycle. We are also a founding member of Bidget Building Digital Twin Association in Brussels. Um, we use our software services for energy simulations uh, to provide decision support in larger scales, especially in district and urban level, uh, which has a bigger potential to contribute tackling environmental challenges that we are facing today. Um, before presenting our projects, I would like to talk uh, briefly about our design methodology. Um, and um, here, as you can see, uh, it is um, this, this is the methodology we have adopted, and it is based on the state-of-the-art research on sustainable buildings. Our aim is to design high-performance buildings focusing on each and every aspect. We are trying to make sure we don't sacrifice any of these aspects. All life impacts of the building. Um, uh, building on environment, economy, health, and productivity is our major concern. These are the targets we work towards in each case, working on the specific conditions. Reduction of the energy and water consumption, waste, increasing efficiency and comfort are the utmost targets to be achieved. We work towards these targets with the team who work together from the beginning of every project. We make regular design charrettes to discuss our goals, strategies, research, solutions, and building performance analysis to improve our design. To reduce environmental impact of our project, projects, we utilize these performance analysis and examine our design decisions. Um, last but not least, we are so proud to be working towards gender equality as a company established by women. It is just a lovely coincidence that I'm presenting with my women colleagues in this session who are also working hard to fix the errors of our planet. So the first project I'm going to present is the Green Technology Vocational High School in Ankara funded under Promoting Energy Efficiency in Buildings in Turkey project of UNDP. The aim is to design a school campus and an office building with integrated design approach within the boundaries of the Turkish public procurement system. The project beneficiaries are the ministries that have contributed to the whole process, which was a first in Turkey. We have a huge team behind this project. Our project consortium, Atelier 10 from UK and Villain Associates from Germany, with the valuable contribution of all local experts in every field of expertise needed for the project. The school project was awarded in the Sign of the City Awards in the Community of Green Buildings in, 19, in 2018. Uh, we have coordinated the whole design process from concept to detailed design for architecture and engineering, conducted building performance analysis and prepared the tender files. You can see the three buildings designed, the school building in the middle, the um, sports hall on the left, and the boarding house for the experts that visit the school for, for long-term training. From definition of targets and requirements to revised final architectural and engineering design, supervision and construction and commissioning, 
later conducting awareness raising activities through trainings and lectures, which we still do. Uh, the building itself was, has been a tool for sustainability showcase. The documentaries of this project is available on YouTube. You can see some images after the completion of the construction. To achieve the sustainable building targets that I've presented, we worked in each of these topics that are also required by green building certification systems. Here are some of the systems and strategies we have worked on during project development. I need to highlight that natural ventilation, effective daylighting and fresh air for all spaces within the building has been fundamental achievements through the design decisions. You can see the summer and winter scenarios that were developed considering the climatic data of the region. All systems working are designed in relation to each other. We have utilized the ground heat as a source for reduction of the heating and cooling loads. Solar thermal is used for heating and electricity. With all the improvements, we have achieved an 83% reduction in the total energy consumption compared to the baseline building that has an envelope design defined in TS 825, which is the current thermal insulation standard in Turkey. Heat recovery wind ventilation, building envelope, solar shading and lighting control, energy efficient mechanical system, renewables are the steps for this improvement. When we have a look at the economic measures, these improvements have a payback period of nine and a half years. Here you can see some of the systems used in the building and these various types of electricity production have been in line with the functional requirements since this building is home for green technologies education. It was a design decision taken in dialogue taken in dialogue with the authorities that students would be familiar with different systems while studying at the school. Here you can see it will be a showcase also for these um, various types of um, energy production units. The other building designed within the scope of the project is the Land Registry and Cadastro Office in Ankara. Upon completion, the building was also awarded in the Sign of the City Awards recently. The building was designed by the same project team. You can see the renders and the images after the completion of the construction. And again, these are the topics we worked on to achieve sustainable building targets that I have presented. Uh, building functional requirements followed by the natural cross ventilation, maximized daylighting and passive systems are the key components of the design. Building orientation has become the starting point of all studies in line with the functional requirements. High performance building envelope and solar shading have great impacts on the current figures of the building energy use. Solar orientation has been studied in detail and the impact of orientation was outstanding. In this building, we have designed a labyrinth system for passive heat storage, used a solar chimney with trombo wall and used solar wall as the cladding of archive space, which has a huge surface area and doesn't require any daylighting. We have worked on placing the archive space considering these functions. With the improvements, we have achieved an 84% energy saving on total annual energy consumption. And the payback period for this building is four years. Um, the last building I'm going to mention uh, is, uh, the, uh, is a retrofitting project. 
Um, it is in Krypkale, um, and the, this project is funded by GIZ, German Corporation for International Corporation. Project partners and beneficiaries are the Ministry of Environment and Urbanization and the Ministry of National Education. The project target was to showcase cost-efficient, replicable, energy and earthquake retrofitting design. Obermeier from Germany was our project partner. Here you can see the building prior to retrofitting as well. This is a um, picture uh, during the construction period. So we, uh, we have worked on the uh, engineering and architectural design of the project uh, with all these analysis, as you can see. Um, in um, the assessment of all data collected from surveys and energy audits, conceptual design with energy modeling and LCA, life cycle assessment and life cycle cost analysis scenarios and detailed design and preparation of tender documents was what have been done throughout the project. You can see some of the, those building simulation images that we have uh, utilized during the, uh, the design period. So our aim was to make way for substantial benefits through adapting and replicating our strategy in other typical public projects with the variations due to different climatic conditions. Here I have to note that uh, there's a concept of typical school building project uh, that have been replicated in various cities in Turkey. Here are some renders of the architectural design, which is not a dramatic difference, but a better version of the current one that is within the boundaries of the project renovation budget. Here you can see the images through the construction period, um, starting with the earthquake retrofitting and later on with energy performance um, um, studies. And again, the concept we worked on. The project principles, uh, it was the structural integrity, waterproofing and air tightness that we have worked on and uh, the function of this school uh, as a, a that has comfort values for all school users, sufficient ventilation, daylighting, room temperature has been the comfort me measures. So um, these are um, these are the um, improvements that have been done in the project. Renewed heating systems with high efficiency burst and thermostatic valves, improved air quality with heat recovery ventilation devices, improved daylighting, water efficient taps and data monitoring are major improvements of the retrofit design. The figures that show the reduction of the energy consumption as well as the massive decrease uh, in carbon dioxide emissions revealed the importance of the project and its replication for other school buildings. As a part of the holistic design approach, landscape is always a part of our projects that we design with the same environmental concern. We use landscape to improve indoor air quality and health and well-being of building users. Our landscaping strategy includes utilizing plants and trees as shading and contribute to energy savings as well as acoustic control. We have also designed the interior of the school building, selection of environmental friendly finishing materials, paints and varnish, improve air quality, indoor air quality. 
We also believe good design contributes to learning and productivity. In all our projects, we have the mission of awareness raising through trainings, lectures, documentaries as a new NDP project, and in this case, through exhibit design, which is currently being implemented and will be set up permanently in the school building. The more building users and public are informed, the better these buildings will be used and performed, we believe. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Seda, for this great presentation, and you were very timely. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I was Thank a bit faster much. than I expected. <laughs> it was uh, wonderful. So um, anyway, we will have questions at the end, so we will have time to uh, uh, discuss yes, sure. uh, some more details later. Um, now uh, we can continue with our... Um, following presentation. Uh, our following speakers are Martine Feyer and Alexandra Frankel. Martine Feyer is a partner of AAP Architects and in Vienna. She's an architect, urban designer, project manager and certified passive house designer. Alexandra Frankel is also a partner of AAP Architect and in Vienna. She is also an architect, project manager and certified passive house designer. Martina and Alexandra have contributed the design and construction of a variety of projects such as educational facilities, housing complexes, care and social facilities, office buildings, and most of them in Passive House Standard in AAP Architecten. They are authors of the children's book, We Are Building a Passive House, published in 2007. The book explains how a passive house works in a simple and playful way for child-oriented environmental and education projects. Today, they will be talking about Austria's first passive house plus student dormitory in Vienna. So now we are listening to dear Martin and Alexandra. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> So, hello to everybody. Is the presentation, can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, fine. So we can start. Uh, my name is Martina Feira and this is my colleague Sandra Frankl. And we are both partners from RP Architects. Hello, I'm Alexandra Frankel. And I want to say good afternoon to everybody and especially for the Turkish audience, Meraba. I hope I pronounced it right. Before Martina will start with the presentation of the greenhouse, I want to introduce our office to you in a short way. AAP Architekten was founded in 1991 and it's jointly headed by six partners. Uh, we know each other from our studies at the uni Technical University in Vienna. The focus is to realize social and ecological sustainable architecture to build energy efficient buildings and very important by our project is the participation process. Our buildings are as you said before, they are from the social part, like kindergarten, schools, residential buildings, and whenever it's possible, we want to build them in passive house standard. We have also other activities in our office. It's the children book you mentioned, and then we have one colleague, he works in the investigation of antique structures. And then we think it's not only important to build sustainable buildings, it's also important to change the economical systems. And that's the reason why our office is a pioneer company of the movement economy of the common goods. After a lot of 
small passive house buildings we could realize we got the chance to design a large volume building in a new district of Vienna and about the design process, Martina will give you a summary. Yes, uh, uh, the student dorm is located in the new district of Vienna, Alexandra said before, it's Aspen, Vienna's urban lakeside. Here you can see the lake in the middle of this district and this street around, it's called Sonnenallee. This street here is uh, the street where most of the shops are located in this new part of Vienna. And this is our, our building site on one of the most important street crossings in this place. Uh, the student dorm is built for three operators together. And all these operators are uh, non-profit organizations. And uh, this was a big challenge in, for the design process to bring all the ideas uh, from them together. To the building site, uh, our building plot uh, was divided in two parts and only the half of them is for the student dorm. And in Aspen, Vienna's urban lakeside, there are very strict building regulations and following these rules, we have had to build an E-shaped building, which fits not very well for a passive house. And so we did an alternative design, a C-shaped building. And this uh, uh, ensures uh, less shading for the inner courtyard. We have uh, less outer surface and uh, more user space and less uh, 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 area for circulation in this building. And uh, fortunately, the government could follow our arguments and we can't realize the alternative design. Our design idea was to show the uh, alternative energies uh, used in this new part of Vienna in our building. We have shared, shared the building for 314 students into three houses for every uh, operator, one house for approximately 100 students. We think it's uh, a good uh, size for the students to for the identification with their own house and their own home. Uh, the first uh, energy we have uh, taken is sun. We have the solar gains through the windows, but also we have a, a huge uh, photovoltaic array on the roof. And so we can use the sun on the roof also. The middle part is called air. In, we have a passive house. We have a, a ventilation system with heat recovery. And the last uh, building, it's called earth. In Aspen, Vienna's urban lakeside, it was planned to use geothermal energy for the whole district, but the drilling was not as successful as expected. And today we have uh, only district heating there. And the connecting element in Aspen is the lake, it's water. And so we have chosen for our student dorm also water for the connected part of the building, the common rooms in the, in the ground floor. A short view to the functions in this building. In the uh, basement, uh, we have a big garage, but not only for our building, also for plots around our uh, building. There are in the first basement, there, are big, there is a big storage for bicycles also, and the room for building equipment where the ventilation system is located, and a multifunctional room for the students. In the ground floor, there are the common rooms and at the, zone, uh, at the street where the shops are located, we have an entrance and a bank in our building. They are not part of the passive house, but also in a very high energy efficiency standard. And in the upper levels, we have the apartments of the students in the house, sun, air, and earth. 
uh, short view on the ground floor. In the middle is the main entrance. Uh, located here is a lobby and the administration. Near the entrance is the uh, laundry for the students who think it's a good place for that because students are waiting for the laundry and so they can meet people coming and going away and uh, talk to them. And so we think it's a, a quite a good meeting place for the students. Uh, this blue uh, part of the inner courtyard, it's lowered. You can see it in the section also here, it's called Blue Ribbon and it leads natural daylight into the uh, first band in the multifunctional room and it used the need for artificial lighting there. In the upper levels, we have uh, different uh, room types. We have a lot of single rooms. Uh, these are the favorites from, from the students, but we have also double units and uh, uh, flat sharing communities on the corner of the building and also two flat sharing communities in the ground floor uh, for disabled people. And now to the building equipment, Alexandra will talk to you. Yeah, what are the components to realize a zero energy building? First, of course, you have to construct the building in Passiva standard. That means high isolated uh, outside walls. In our case, in the greenhouse, the walls are 18 centimeters concrete and 30 centimeters EPS uh, isolation. We have, of course, triple glazing windows. And then it was uh, important that we have a thermal bridge-free construction and to care for the air tightness. The air tight, uh, the, the result from the Passive House Institute is a demand of 0 0.6, but in our case, the building physics said we have to reach less than 0 0.3 because it's a very high volume. And of course, it's easier to reach 0 0.6 with such a big volume than a lower air tightness result. Very important for the passive house is the ventilation system. We have a circulating heat exchanger and this heat exchanger is controlled by CO2 sensors. The residual heating, as Martina said before, is now uh, done by a long distance heating. The long distance heating in Vienna is made by burning the garbage of the city of Vienna. So it's also a very sustainable way to, to use heat. Also the, the water, the hot water generation is made by this long distance heating. And for saving water, we have installed special water saving tapes. To reach the zero building energy standard means also that you have to produce renewable energy and we do this with a huge photovoltaic array. We have on the whole roofs, we have panels, 738 panels on the whole roof. And then we got the chance to have a big research project in Aspen in Vienna's lakeside and they chose five buildings for uh, this research project to, to show, to research what kind of energy system is good for residential buildings. And therefore we could install also a battery system in our building. Some details to the components, the ventilation system, we have two circulating heat exchanger they are parallel connected and usually you connect them behind but if you connect them parallel you have less friction and then you can uh, save energy if the air has not to pass both of these heat exchangers they are 
working with CO2 sensors. And so we can regulate the ventilation level in the rooms. If is someone inside, you have a higher level. If some if the room is is empty, the ventilation system is working on a low level. This this system with the the minimizing the friction were also uh, working on the special developed filters, the mini pleat filters. You can see here, they also work to reduce the friction. The photovoltaic panels, they are oriented on the roof east-west that gave us the possibility to install much more panels than we had it oriented in the sort because the panels do not uh, sheet each other. And you can see we have a output from 221 kilowatt peak from these panels. And the work that we, that the dormitory is using the energy which is produced. And if there is energy left, we store it in the battery system. And if there is get, is almost energy left, then we supply it in the common grip. But it's also important that you reduce the energy demand inside the building. That means we used only LED lights, mostly with presence detectors. We tried to get daylight into the circulation areas wherever it was possible. We optimized all components that consume power and which is a very important part. We tried to, to find uh, appliances with less or no standby function. In the rooms, that means it's very easy, it's easier to, to get the zero energy building standard in a normal residential building than in a dormitory, because in the dormitory we have very small apartments and they're all equipped with a full kitchen. So we have a lot of appliances which need energy. And so it was important to search the right microwave, the right refrigerator, because you have this 250 times in the house. Then you can see here a very large heater radiator. And that's also because of reducing the energy, because this radiator works with a very low feed temperature to optimize the volumetric flow. Then we have special water, uh, special water saving fixtures with an expanded cold water area to reduce the hot water demand because the experience of operators of student dormitories is that they need in the meantime more energy for the generation of the hot water than of heating. Yeah, and because of this research project, we monitor 15 rooms where they control the energy consumption, the temperature, humidity, water consumption, and how often the students open the windows in the winter time. Yeah, and this is the result of our work there. This is the diagram of the Passive House Institute where we got the certification Passive House Plus. You can see the primary energy production and the primary energy need the, is in this part between the Passifas Premium and Passifas Plus. And then we got two other certifications from this project in Austria, and both are on the level code. Opening was in March 2015, in, on the beginning of the summer semester of universities. And from the first moment on, the 
dormitory was fully booked, it works and students are happy with it. Now we want to take the time and to show you another dormitory we could, another project we could realize just after the greenhouse and Martina will give you a short summary again about the process. Hello again. Uh, uh, some words to the design process. The student dorm mine room is in Styria in the south of Vienna in Leoben. It's a, uh, built as a timber construction and it's a house for 201 students. It's for one of the operators from the, from the greenhouse, the ÖAD, a uh, uh, non-profit organization. To the construction, I've said before, it's a timber construction, but not all of this building, because in Styria there were uh, relation for fire protection and we could only build five levels uh, as a timber construction. And that's the reason why this part, the green one, is uh, a concrete construction in the uh, ground floor and the five uh, timber levels are the upper floors and also the stairwells are built as concrete constructions. Uh, this picture shows the prefabrication of the outer walls. They are uh, built as timber frame constructions and the horizontal uh, reinforcement of the building is done by uh, CLD discs, these are the inner walls and the ceiling discs and for every door inside the building you have to cut out approximately two square meters of these uh, plates and we have the idea to do upcycling with uh, these up, uh, outcut uh, parts and have done a furniture for this building from this uh, outcuts. Uh, in this, in the building, we have uh, two uh, 1,900 tons of uh, wood, and so we have a saving of 2,000 tons of CO2. And additional to this, we have 25 tons only from the upcycling and the using the CLT outcuts for furniture. And to the building equipment, Alexandra, say something to you again. Yeah, that's very easy because it's quite similar to the greenhouse because the energy designer and the building physics they were the same experts. We were working in the greenhouse. There are only three components we didn't realize there. That's the first, the CO2 sensors by the ventilation device. We didn't realize them because the repayment time is not economical. It's such a long time that we couldn't afford it there. And we also didn't realize the huge heater radiators. That was also a financial question. And the third thing is the battery system. We don't store uh, the energy from the photovoltaic array at the moment, but we prepared everything that we can install it later. So I give you some impressions of this building. Here you see the garden and a view to the inner court. Here pictures from the inner court with the wall where we have a lot of green there for the climber in the in a port, not yet, but believe us, after a few years, it's quite green. Yeah, that's the foyer. And we also have a little bar for the students and a multifunction room there. Yeah, and after only 11 months of construction time, we opened the mine room in Leoben in October 2016, and the project awarded several prizes, and we are especially proud of the first 
price you can see here, it's uh, architecture price for timber construction buildings in Styria. The building is also certified from the Passive House Institute. It's a Passive House Plus again, and also the Austrian certification being active was done with the level of gold. Yes, and why are we doing this? It was mentioned before for our children and for our future. And for this reason, we have written a children's book. It's called We Are Building a Passive House, and it explains in a playful way how it works to build energy efficient buildings and, and that we should do this. And it's available in eight languages. You can see there is no Turkish translation yet, but maybe in the future we can do this. And the conclusion for us is when you are planning and, and designing uh, high energy efficient buildings, uh, important part is integral planning from the beginning. You have to uh, go as a team together in this project. This project has to be a passive house. You have to build a passive house construction. Another important part point is to optimize uh, the electric consumption in this building, the use of renewable energies, and whenever it's possible to build this, uh, this project in e e ecologic building materials. It uh, goes together with the next point, it's sinking cradle to cradle, and Last but not least, sharing the knowledge. And at this point, thank you that we can present our projects to you. It was a great pleasure for us. And thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, we are here to answer you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for these wonderful presentations again. It was very uh, exciting to listen to uh, these great projects and to see how this energy efficiency is uh, going into new dimensions and directions. So very beautifully designed buildings. And on the comments, I can see many, th many thank you messages to your great presentation. So our audience is uh, very happy to see these projects. And of course, we have uh, some questions. Maybe I can read them aloud for you and then uh, we can have discussions. Um, one question is for our first presentation. Your energy efficiency measures have great reduction in consumption and return of investment is below 10 years. Has your works wide, been widely recognized in Turkey? Um, thank you for this uh, great question. Um, indeed, these were the uh, first um, buildings uh, for public uh, being built with public procurement system. And we have experienced all the bottlenecks uh, in these buildings. Uh, the, the system is this build, green building system in Turkey is developing currently. And um, it has been um, developed through the years that we have been uh, doing this project. In the years uh, that we have started green building design in the beginning of uh, 2000s, it was almost impossible to implement uh, even a PV in one of our projects because the cost was so high. Uh, and However, uh, it is being widely used nowadays and it is uh, therefore being approachable and uh, achievable. Uh, so um, since we can, um, we can um, calculate the costs and quantify the benefits of this act, uh, we are more and more um, able to design these buildings and it is getting better. Um, for example, the solar wall system uh, when we designed this building, it was only being produced in Canada. However, nowadays it is being produced in Turkey as well. So it's a huge difference 
uh, and implementing these systems to our buildings. So it is changing rapidly. Thank and you. And the demand is increasing as well. So thank you. Actually, there was another question. I think this answer also somehow related to that one, but I would like to uh, read that question as well. Uh, you have a great experience in building and construction energy efficient uh, buildings in different parts of the world, uh, world in several countries. And um, uh, considering that this energy efficient building is quite a new field in Turkey, uh, what were the biggest challenges you had in Turkey? And would you have any recommendations to overcome these issues? <sighs> Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, again, uh, this is um, um, th these projects are public projects, and the public procurement system has really uh, got bottlenecks. And we have been uh, in um, workshops with all the decision makers regarding the change needed for the system, because obviously it doesn't allow uh, so much for the good quality because of the low price tendering system. Um, so uh, the tendering system shall, if it, ch it changes, uh, taking quality into priority, uh, I think it will be a huge impact on uh, building these uh, projects in Turkey. Uh, for example, we cannot always uh, win the tenders uh, only with the, um, um, with the um, price uh, comparisons because <laughs> we are always uh, higher than that, but we always win with the technical methodology. And this is what is more important to achieve those buildings. Um, there are uh, some other uh, support mechanisms, such as waste, what to do with the construction waste. It is a holistic approach, and we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, say that um, what one of them is less important. Uh, since these projects are also developing in Turkey, such as there's a new zero waste project, which we hope there will be a huge impact of this project as well. These are the complementary issues of uh, those projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, actually, I think Zero Build Forum itself is a way of recognition of such kind of projects and such kind of issue issues in Turkey. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, we have some questions for Martina and Alexandra as well. Thank you uh, for your presentation. And we would love to have the book in Turkish. Uh, would you be willing to collaborate for having the book in Turkish? <laughs> <laughs> we are waiting for. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. That's great. Uh, there is another question for you. Can you also... Just contact us and we will do it. That's great. We will That's find great. a way. <laughs> That's great. Um, there is another question about the uh, cost of these dormitory buildings compared to standard construction. Uh, you mean the passive standard? To uh, yes. yes, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, by the timber construction in Leogen, the owner of the building said we can uh, we had a special price for a square meter that was given and for the Basifa standard we could use 10 percent more and mm -hmm. in this in this uh, part we had to build it it was a competition the the building in Leogen and this was the goal of the the owner he wanted to have a timber construction he wanted to have a passive house and he gave the price per square meter plus 10 percent for the passive house standard mm -hmm. so it was slightly more costly 10 percent more mm -hmm. cost mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay thank you um uh, there is another question for Martina and Alexandra, but it can be for uh, both presentations, I think, because they were both somehow related to educational facilities. Um, 
What are your observations on students attending, edu being educated or living in passive house schools, universities, campuses or dormitories? How does it affect their overall well-being or learning or how do they interact with these buildings? Does it create any difference in their learning or in their understanding of sustainability, ecological design or environmental issues? Maybe you can, uh, all of you can try to answer this question because you have many very valuable observations in this field. Maybe Seda first. <laughs> yeah, um, I can say absolutely. It has a great impact. Uh, we have experienced this in Krikale. We have made several trainings there uh, before COVID situation, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, when we first uh, went there, uh, most of the students uh, even didn't hear about climate change and all the uh, issues regarding green building. And we have informed them about that. Um, and they were so excited and learned more about these. So it was a kind of um, starting this awareness among students. And I believe after the completion of the school, uh, they, they couldn't yet have the chance to come back to their schools. Uh, but after coming back to school and seeing that exhibition as well, and maybe more trainings will be done, uh, they, will be, um, they will be totally new uh, students from that uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Yes, to the, to the question for the student dormitories, uh, the operator of the mine room and also one of the operators of the greenhouse is the ÖRD Wohnraumverwaltung. And they are building till, I don't know, what to 10, years more, 10 than years more, only passive houses and they have development developed a um, manual for students how a passive mm -hmm. house works and and mm -hmm. in which house they are live in and uh, they have also summer universities to train the students uh, for sustainable buildings and 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 designing and uh, they are all international students and when they are going back to their uh, countries, they take the knowledge back to their uh, home. And so we think it's a very good way to spread the thinking about ecological building over the world. Yes, that's right. Doing it in such uh, public facilities is, I think, in that terms, more important uh, in terms of spreading the knowledge and spreading this understanding it becomes more important. Thank you. Um, we have another question to Seda. It is specifically about labyrinth system and especially the uh, surfaces of the labyrinth and the control of the labyrinth. They are asking for some details about these issues. Yeah, uh, the labyrinth system is originally developed by our partner Atelier 10 in, in their various projects. Uh, and the main, uh, main, um, re the, the major benefit of this project is to uh, contribute to the heating and cooling load loads uh, while, um, while securing, um, an, Mm -hmm. an additional uh, heat storage, thermal storage uh, inside. Uh, so uh, uh, during the summer nights, for example, it was a perfect uh, case for Ankara, uh, climatic conditions for Ankara. Uh, during the summer nights, the cool air from outside was taken to the labyrinth and uh, it was, uh, it was, um, throughout uh, going through the labyrinth walls, uh, the heat uh, exchange was um, supplied. Uh, and during the day, uh, it, the, the, the um, cold air uh, was supplied to the main system to um, aid for those excess loads uh, of the system. 
I hope I can understand. I can tell it. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. And there is another question again. I think this is for both of the uh, presentations. Which materials do you think are the most cheap and mo most affordable to construct green buildings? Do you have any material selections, preferences? But affordable. So if I'm, yeah, if, if, if I may start, yes, uh, I think it depends in which country you live, mm -hmm. because in Austria, if you build in the east of Austria, for example, in Vienna, the cheapest material is concrete and EPS isolation. Mm -hmm. And I had a, I had a, um, a presentation in the greenhouse and there was a, a lady from Egypt and she was very surprised why we are building with concrete because in Egypt concrete is one of the most expensive material. So first mm -hmm. it depends where you are building. Here in mm -hmm. Austria, I think it's quite dissimilar because it's if you are building in a prefabricated timber construction, it is much faster to build and you have a lot of costs during the construction time, mm -hmm. which, the, the, which, which you have to pay. And if you have a very short construction time, so you can save money. So in, I think it's quite similar, but of course the timber construction is more ecological and it's, it's a great material and the, the dormitory in Leoben, it wouldn't have been possible to build it in 11 months, inclusive the furnitures. So that wouldn't be possible with concrete. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I can add to this, um, uh, I believe uh, the uh, most efficient uh, choice would be the local materials, not uh, in terms of costs, uh, but also uh, the amount of carbon dioxide emissions it uh, leads to while uh, transportation uh, of those materials to the site. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um... I think for now, uh, these are the questions. If you have any uh, final comments, final remarks to make after all these uh, questions. Uh, excuse me. Our, our we have comment one. is behind us. Act now. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I hope this message is also spreading all around. That's right. Uh, excuse me. Meanwhile, we had uh, some other. Meanwhile, we had uh, some other questions. Um, I'm reading these. How does the data monitoring system work in the passive house dormitory? Do recorded energy and resource consumption values are stored in a monitoring system in the building? Uh, I they, they ask uh, how how it worked the system. There are sensors in the rooms on the window mm -hmm. and the, the water tap and so on. There are a lot of sensors in in these rooms, and mm -hmm. uh, the students give their understandings. Uh, they have to the students have to sign that it is allowed to control the room in which they they are living. Mm -hmm. If a student doesn't mm -hmm. want it, he, he, they gave him another room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Okay. So it is continuously record, monitored and recorded, I think. It's recorded for three years, five years? Five years. Five years, I think, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, we don't have any results at the moment mm -hmm. because they, the the research project uh, they don't work with us. They just chose the building, and it's very difficult to get informations mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I understand some.
technical issues like, arising. <laughs> I can't give you a, can't give you results at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is another question. Uh, I think again, this is for Martina and Alexandra. Do you record consumption data of retrofitted buildings? No, we made retrofit for small houses, mm -hmm. for double family house, a double family house, but we don't have any monitoring there. Monitoring there. Mm -hmm. we, 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 the, the, the house, the retrofit was in passive house standard, but we don't have any mm -hmm. data. It's a private project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Seda, I think you also had some retrofit projects. Uh, uh, how about you, you? Do you any, do you record these data in your retrofitted buildings? Um, Yes, we have uh, developed our own uh, software, which is Ecobina, in various mm -hmm. EU projects. Uh, with, with the aid of that uh, software, we can uh, collect data from the sensors that are placed in the building. Uh, and one of the targets of uh, the recent retrofitting project is to install those sensors as well to collect live data uh, throughout the life cycle of the building. Mm -hmm. And are you recording these data? Yeah, we will be. Not yet, because mm -hmm. it's not implemented yet, uh, but mm -hmm. we will be, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And we have another question. Uh, why were Austria's first passive house plus student dormitory uh, concrete, concrete stairs used in that building? I think why concrete uh, stairs were used in that building? It's be, it's because of fire protection. No, 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 no. Oh? no there, there is a, a misunderstanding because in the greenhouse, which was the first passive house plus student dormitory in mm -hmm. Austria, it's completely made from concrete, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. greenhouse. And mm -hmm. in Leom, in the mine room, we had to do it because of fire protection, because of the mm -hmm. rules. It was mm -hmm. not allowed to build in another material than concrete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So a couple of seconds more if any other question comes. Meanwhile, it was uh, really amazing to see, uh, especially uh, women architects, designers, and experts in this sustainability and energy efficiency field. I think you are uh, great role models for uh, many more architects to come. So it was an amazing session, I think. Um, and of course, having especially educational facilities, schools, university campuses, dormitories, I think it is also an important issue in energy efficiency field because as you have already mentioned, it has the potential of creating this awareness in young minds and there is the potential to distribute and disseminate this knowledge, understanding and mindset um, all over the world. Uh, so there is a great, greater, even greater impact um, of such kind of buildings in addition to their health, uh, uh, well-being and such kind of impacts. So it was really great to listen to your presentations. And of course, thank, thank you very much for our guests as well for joining and being with us today. Uh, if there are no more questions and if you, if you don't have any additional remarks, I think we can finalize our uh, session here today. And of course, before leaving, I would like to thank to Zero Build Forum as well uh, for creating this session and uh, inviting uh, you ladies as speakers and me as the moderator. It was a great honor for me to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
thank you with a couple of words from me as well. Um, yes, I'm please. really proud to be working in such projects and producing these projects and disseminating this knowledge and know-how uh, to increase those kinds of projects all over the world. And as women, uh, we are acting now to change our future and I'm so happy about that. Thank you for all the audience yes, and all the committee. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much. Hope to see you later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.